the Kyle Odom Manifesto. Before I read the actual document, I will first give a brief summary written by the Reddit user VegetableLog9608. For those of you who are not familiar with this story, and I want you all to keep in mind that this is a true story. Kyle Odom, an ex-Marine, decides to get into meditation because of how stressful school was. While meditating one night, he has an out-of-body experience. He comes in contact with another being. This being lets him know that he is not welcome there. Long story short, after that day his life was ruined. He couldn't sleep anymore. He was getting gang-stalked in school, at the airport, and at convenience stores. He was told to go to a church. He goes and gets a bad feeling, so he decides to leave. He started to get threatening texts from the church about surrendering. He goes back and meets the pastor who revealed himself as a reptilian. Kyle shoots the pastor reptilian 12 times with a 45 caliber handgun. One even penetrated his head, but missed the brain. The pastor reptilian, Tim Remington, survives and is now a member of the House of Representatives, while Kyle is serving a 25-year sentence. Now I will read the actual manifesto written by Kyle Odom himself. Who is Kyle Odom? Born and raised in North Idaho, grew up in a loving family, joined the Marine Corps after high school, developed an interest in science, went to school for a degree in biochemistry, won numerous scholarships and awards, graduated magna cum laude, then got invited to a prestigious university to work on genetics. Check my personal documents. As you can see, I'm pretty smart. I'm also 100% sane, 0% crazy. Why did he do it? My life was ruined. Ruined by an intelligent species of amphibian humanoid from Mars. I wish I was joking. Keep reading. They were here long before we ever existed. Their technology is millions of years more advanced than ours. I've seen them do things that defy all comprehension. They have a massive breeding stock of humans, which they breed and control from birth. They use these humans to live vicarious lives among us. They appear to be completely normal because they are good at imitating human behavior. See Martian technology for an explanation on this. The actual Martians live deep underground here and inside of the moon. They take control of wild human beings and use them as sex slaves. Don't believe me? Ask President Obama to take a lie detector test on this one. They tried to take me, but they were unable to control my mind. They have been following me ever since. I tried everything to get my life back. I begged, bargained, and I threatened. Everything I tried to do was sabotaged. I attempted suicide twice, but they stopped me both times. My last resort was to take actions that would bring this to the public's attention. My story. Spring 2014, Moscow, Idaho. Everything started while I was at the University of Idaho. Spring 2014 was my final semester, and I was taking a heavy course load. I was very stressed due to the intensity of my schedule, so I searched for a way to cope. I discovered meditation, which seemed to help so it became part of my daily routine. As I learned more about meditation, 
I became interested in consciousness and our ability to affect it. I kept working on my meditation techniques and began achieving extreme states of consciousness. This continued until I encountered another being through meditation. It happened one night in February 2014, and it was the most profound experience I've ever had. I was lying in bed meditating, then suddenly left my physical body. I entered a space that was completely dark and had no awareness of my physical boundaries or orientation. I felt very peaceful there, until a blue light began to approach me. As the blue light got closer, I realized it was another being. Once I was in the being's presence, I felt an immediate sense of wrongdoing. I felt like I was being told, you shouldn't be here. I instantly conceded and felt guilty. Then I began to distance myself from the being. This had an impact on them and seemed to change their mind about me. The moment I began to distance myself from the being, I became overwhelmed by a feeling I can only describe as unconditional love. During this part of the experience, our minds became connected and I saw that the being was female. I then began to feel the most euphoric, comforting, and blissful feelings I have ever felt. It was incredibly powerful and life-altering. Next thing I knew, I woke up. I had tears in my eyes, and I couldn't get out of bed. I felt a profound sense of loss, like I had just lost someone close to me. It was very painful. A few minutes later, the experience left my mind, against my will, and I went about my day. After that, I had no urge to meditate at all. Every time I even thought about meditation, the thought was stripped from my mind. When I finally did try meditating again, I was unable to achieve anything. I didn't think much of it at the time, but I knew it wasn't going to improve. Ultimately, I decided to give up on meditation and just focus on my classes. The remainder of the semester became exceedingly easy for me. It felt like I had tapped into some kind of power. I was exerting no mental effort, even though the classes had been extremely difficult before. I also began to have complex thoughts and a depth of understanding I had never reached before. About a month later, I started interviewing at the graduate schools I had applied to. Shortly after the interviews were done, I started receiving offers. I decided to accept the offer from Baylor College of Medicine to work on a PhD in human genetics. I was very excited about the opportunity to work at such a prestigious university. The future looked bright, and I couldn't wait to get started. July 2014 through October 2014, Houston, Texas. Everything changed once I started the program. The moment I arrived, I could see flaws in every professor's research. My mind was so expanded that I could instantly understand the implications of entire research projects. Because of this, I was able to see weaknesses in all the available projects. This caused me to become very concerned about what I was doing, and I felt like I was wasting my time. I voiced my concerns to my advisor, and he casually brushed them off. He told me, just have fun, it'll be fun. I kept trying to get motivated, but things continued to get worse. I started seeing flaws in the foundations of genetics and other fields. It got to the point 
where I couldn't stop thinking about them. To make things worse, no one else seemed to care, which really bothered me. All these issues made it impossible for me to continue. So, I decided to leave. The day after I decided to leave, my life became a living hell. I couldn't sleep, and my mind felt sapped. I was entirely at peace with my decision, so I knew something strange was happening to me. After a few days of this, two of the graduate students began reaching out to me, blank and blank. I barely knew them, so it seemed unusual they would contact me. When I went to see them, they both kept pointing their finger at me, saying, pew, pew, like they were shooting a gun. They did this over and over, and I kept wondering what their problem was. Months after I left Houston, I was told that Eugene and Brandon were not human. They were tasked with making me into the next school shooter, as they called it. I imagine this is why many of our school shootings take place. Anyway, things slowly improved after I stopped talking with blank and blank, but I was mentally exhausted. I tried to figure out what to do with my life, but I could hardly think. Eventually, I left Texas and started applying for jobs all over the country. A few months later, things took a strange turn. October 2014 through August 2015, CDA, Idaho. In spring 2015, I finally secured an interview with a food company. I thought I was about to get something going with my life, but I was wrong. I couldn't sleep at all the night before my interview. I literally stayed awake the entire night, which had never happened to me before. I looked unrecognizable in the mirror the next morning, and my mind felt sapped, worse than it had in Houston. Needless to say, the interview didn't go well. I couldn't think, and I had extreme difficulty with normal conversation. After the interview was over, I suddenly felt fine and looked perfectly normal. I slept great that night, then made my way to the airport the next morning. This is where the story gets weird. On the plane ride back home, my seat was taken. I asked the flight attendant, and she directed me to a new seat. Once I sat down, an older gentleman in front of me kept glancing back until he got my attention. As he kept looking back, my head began to hurt and tingle. The moment my head began to hurt, his lips curled up into an evil-looking smile. The pain and tingling in my head continued for the rest of the flight and got more intense as time went on. Every time I felt it, the man would start taking notes on a notepad. About halfway through the flight, someone else in front of me held up a newspaper that said, Psychic reading for like five minutes straight. It was blatantly obvious they were doing something to me, but I didn't know what. Once we landed, the older gentleman kept showing me his track phone, as if to say, get one of these. I had applied to several government agencies before this happened, so I thought this might be their way of contacting me. Out of curiosity, I decided to go and buy a track phone. I checked it every day to see if anyone messaged or called. About a month later, I got a text message from a man named John Padula. He invited me to come to church at the altar. It seemed like a strange place to be recruiting for government jobs, but I went anyway. After I got there and went inside, something felt very wrong. 
I felt as if my life was in danger, and I became so uncomfortable I had to leave. A couple days later, I started receiving text messages from Tim Remington. At first, they were innocuous Bible messages, but then he started threatening me. He sent messages talking about their power and other things. He did all of this through Bible verses so it would not look suspicious. I ignored everything until he sent one final text message, which simply said, Angels. I thought nothing of it until helicopters started flying around my house all day and all night. At this point, I knew I was in trouble. I knew I needed to contact them, so I made an appointment to meet John Padula for coffee. Little did I know, he had no intention of meeting me. After making the appointment to meet John, something very bizarre happened. I received the most unnatural blank I've ever had. It felt like someone was manually pumping blood into my blank, and I don't know how else to describe it. Immediately after that, a song began playing in my mind. The lyrics went, Sister, sister, he's just a plaything. We want to make him stay up all night. I had never heard this song before, and I had no idea what it meant. I tried to ignore it and kept searching for jobs. A few minutes later, the song quit playing. Nothing else happened until I tried to go to sleep that night. As soon as I got into bed, the song started again. Sister, sister, he's just a plaything. We want to make him stay up all night. As it turned out, they weren't kidding. I got literally zero minutes of sleep that night. Every time I started to drift off, I was woken up violently. Then the song would play. When the sun came up, I gave up on trying to sleep and got out of bed. I was relieved at first because the song had quit playing. I thought the torture was over until a voice entered my mind. The voice said, You are going to be uncomfortable. All you have to do is breathe. I sat there wondering what this meant until the voice spoke again. It told me I was going to be sacrificed like Jesus and get beheaded. This threw me into a complete panic. My heart began racing and I started to have a mental breakdown. A few minutes later, some man knocked on my door. I answered, and he gave me a pamphlet talking about the sacrifice of Jesus. My mind started racing out of control, and I became completely delirious. I thought for sure I was going to die. My thoughts shifted to my family, and all I could think about was seeing them again. They were in Albuquerque at the time, so I decided to buy a one-way ticket there. When I reached the Spokane airport, my panic subsided. Everything was fine until I got on the plane to Albuquerque. I sat next to this huge man who kept telling me, telepathically, that he was going to crash the plane. Every time after he spoke, he would sniff empathetically. I didn't know what to do, so I just sat there trying to stay as calm as possible. The man became angry about this and started touching my leg. The second he touched me, I could feel him inside my mind. This caused me to panic until I was on the verge of causing a scene. Before I did anything, he told me to calm down and said, You did a great job. You passed. Go enjoy your family. We have a job waiting for you when you get back. I thanked him and felt slightly relieved. 
but I had no intention of contacting him at all. My only thought was to get as far away from him as possible. After getting off of the plane, I headed to the baggage claim. A huge group of them surrounded me there. I watched them cautiously. Then they all began sniffing at me. The sniff is something they do all the time. I think it has something to do with dominance. When I finally got my bag, I left the airport as fast as I could. My parents were right outside waiting to pick me up. I was so happy to see them again. I gave them big hugs and told them how much I loved them. This was my last happy moment in Albuquerque, however. They followed us everywhere we went after that. Whenever I saw one, they would sniff at me to let them know it was them. They would also smile, laugh, and stick their tongues out. As time went on, they started coaxing me to go outside alone. I was scared to death they would kill me, so I refused. Eventually, they threatened to harm my family, which caused me to give in to them. I told them I would do whatever they want if they left my family alone. They responded by saying, go to church. I knew they meant the altar, so I agreed to go when I got back. When I went to the altar for the first time, the people acted very strange. It was unhuman. As I walked into the sermon room, everyone stared at me and began sniffing emphatically. Needless to say, I was scared as hell, but I took a seat. When the service began, a man came and sat down next to me. After he sat down, I began smelling something. It was a smell I had never smelt before. The only thing I can compare it to is a reptile and vinegar. After smelling it, I became very uncomfortable. I tried to remain calm and just sat there quietly until the service was over. When the service ended, they said, You can leave now. After that, I knew I wasn't dealing with the government anymore. I realized that whoever I was dealing with was extraterrestrial, so I became very scared. I received no further instructions from them after that, so I began applying for jobs again. Even though I had done exactly as I was told, they still followed me everywhere I went. As time went on, they started harassing me day and night. I began to hear voices more often, and I began to hallucinate things that I knew weren't real. They also started playing with me sexually. Both the males and the females would play out their sexual fantasies in my mind. This came with random and uncontrollable blank, as well as extreme blank stimulation. See Brain and Behavior and Martian Tech. The harassment continued for weeks and intensified as time went on. I did my absolute best to maintain my sanity and tried to avoid them. This worked for a while, but eventually I had a huge meltdown. One day, I was in the bakery at Safeway when I got surrounded by a bunch of old men. Some of them looked at me and sniffed, so I knew it was them. They started stimulating my blank and blank simultaneously. Then they spoke aggressively. They said, Humans are nothing more than the result of a successful genetic experiment. You are a threat to the way these people think, and you can no longer be free in society. Your life is over. You are nothing but a toy. Your purpose now is to suck blank. They continued to say other explicit things that were so obscene I won't repeat them here. Before they finished talking, 
I became enraged. It took every ounce of willpower I had not to kill them. I left the store and tried to calm down, but it only got worse. The rest of the night, they continually stimulated blank, and I couldn't stop blank. It got to the point where I was in serious pain. They finally stopped after I broke down and became completely distraught. I knew I couldn't take any more, so I attempted suicide. I filled a charcoal grill with lit coals, put it in my car, and rolled up the windows. I reclined my seat, laid there calmly, then fell asleep. I should have died, but they woke me up in an extreme panic, which caused me to get out of the car. I slowly regained consciousness. I felt very upset to still be alive. I had no clue where to go at that point, so I decided to check myself in to the VA. They shipped me straight to the mental ward and I was admitted. Nothing improved while I was there. The medication they gave me did absolutely nothing. I just sat there, surrounded by a bunch of psychotic people, and became exasperated. I knew their goal was to ruin my life by making me into a crazy person. I became determined not to let that happen, and I started fighting back. After leaving the VA, everything I tried to do with my life was sabotaged. They didn't want me dead, but they also weren't going to let me live. In desperation, I went back to the altar to ask them what they wanted from me. I didn't know what else to do. Before I tell you their reply, I need to make an important caveat here. I had endured so much abuse by this time that I was numb to them. The details of what they have done to me aren't essential to the story, so I won't include them here. If you want to know more about what I have been through, or more about them, write me. Just realize I have been tortured more than a prisoner of war. Their response was, We want you as our sex slave. Thinking they were serious, I sat there waiting for them to do something. All they did was say, keep coming to church. So I did. After a few more services, I found myself talking to Tim Remington face to face. He was telling me that I should consider becoming a minister. We were in mid-conversation when he suddenly revealed himself to me. I have no clue how he did it but it looked as if his human face became his real face. It happened for only one to two seconds, but I was able to draw a sketch of what I saw. His eyes really stood out, so they captured my attention. They were huge and bulging. The eyelids were darker green, and the irises were yellow slash brown with slit pupils. After witnessing this, nothing else happened. I continued attending the altar for a few more services, waiting for them to do something. They did nothing except for tell me to submit and surrender. I had no clue what they meant, so I left the church and never went back. August 2015, present time, CDA, Idaho. After leaving the altar, they gave me some breathing room. They held back on their harassment, and I began to recover. I decided to make one final attempt at a normal life by pursuing a career as a pharmacist. I started taking classes at NIC to finish up the prereqs I needed. I also started volunteering at a local pharmacy. Unfortunately, they followed me to school. There were several of them in every class I took. They made it impossible for me to study, and they continually harassed me, especially while I took tests. Even with all of this going on, 
I still managed to get an A- in an A and P during the fall semester. Sadly, my success was short-lived. The pressure this semester, spring 2016, is far too intense. Every time I go to class, they start manipulating my brain until I go into a blind rage. Sometimes they suppress my brain until I begin to black out. They also manipulate my heart rate and flood my body with adrenaline over and over again, making me extremely uncomfortable. The females stimulate blank when they are close, and the males stimulate blank. It's incredibly exhausting. I struggled to pass my tests, so they couldn't blame this on me failing out of school. I want to continue, but I simply cannot. Every moment I spend in the classroom is absolute torture. The classes themselves are extremely difficult without all this added pressure. The worst part is, I received an interview for ISU's pharmacy program, See Personal Documents. Since I cannot continue with the class, there is no reason to go to the interview. My chance at a normal life has been ruined. They've also been depriving me of sleep, so I don't have the strength to continue. I was too smart for my own good, so they decided to remove me from society. They were worried I might change the way other people think, which could lead to problems. Problems in the form of scientific revolutions. If we get much smarter as a species, we are going to become a threat to their existence. If you talk to me in person, you will see that I am not crazy at all. The Martians are just so good at hiding in plain sight that no one would know they exist unless they revealed themselves. They are able to fool us so well that what I'm saying sounds impossible. However, they are 100% real. Realize their technology is millions of years more advanced than ours. Think about that for a second. Think about the advancement we have made in the last hundred years. Once you've done that, try to imagine what millions of years of technology would look like. The president is well aware of them, which is why I wrote him a personal letter. I hope he does something about it. I have done nothing wrong to deserve what's happened to me. I tried literally everything to find a job and they sabotaged me at every corner. Initially, I thought the right thing to do was kill myself. After attempting suicide twice, it became clear they weren't going to let me die easy. My last resort was to take actions to bring this to the public's attention. I hope something good comes of it. Just realize that I am a good person, and I am completely innocent. Also realize that the people I killed are not what you think. Read Martian technology to understand. To make it very clear, Tim and John were not wild human beings. Wild humans equals normal people like you and I. Tim and John were minds controlled from birth by Martians. It's hard to imagine, I know. Nonetheless, it's all true. Why would I give up a career as a pharmacist to do this? I left out many details from my story. I wanted to write only the most critical events in order to make it coherent. If you want to know more, like how I discovered there are multiple species of them, feel free to write me. Questions and Answers question. Why would aliens hide in a church? Same reason terrorists hide in mosques. If you are doing very bad things and you want to avoid getting caught, you will put up a front to make yourself look like a good person. How do you know about their technology? I have seen them use it, and they have talked to me about it. 
This was how I learned about their breeding stock of remote control humans. Physically, their humans are no different than us. They just lack a mind of their own. Why would they tell you so much? They value me because I am smart. They were also very confident they could take control of my mind. Turns out they couldn't. Anyway, in the interim, some of us developed a personal relationship. They are very arrogant, so they told me much more than they should have. This allowed me to understand some of the things they can do. What else have you seen? I have seen them make things appear out of nowhere. One time I was sitting on a couch, and a dollar bill appeared on my lap. Another time while driving, they made a paper bag appear in my passenger seat. They used random, unsuspecting items, so no one would think anything of it. I was alone both times this happened. I am pretty sure they can pop in and out of this dimension, based on other things I have seen. I am also pretty sure they can overlap our reality with an alternate dimension. I say this because I have gone into stores where I know the employees, and suddenly there are all new employees who I've never seen before. Some of the other things I've seen are so strange, I literally cannot describe them. This all makes sense, though. Their technology is millions of years ahead of ours so it should be incomprehensible to us. Why did they target you? They started following me after I encountered the being through meditation. Since my mind was so expanded from the experience, they deemed me a threat to the rest of society. They thought I would change the way people think, so they decided to remove me from society. I began to have profound thoughts about genetics, while I was at graduate school, which is another factor. If certain ways of thinking are allowed to exist, revolutions will take place. They could not afford for us to have a revolution in genetics. If we did, we could eliminate diseases, cancers, and many other things that plague us. They need us to remain ignorant and continue struggling. Otherwise, we will become a threat to them. This will not make sense unless you are the president or one of his close friends. If this doesn't pertain to you, please ignore it. Mr. President, I want to thank you for your sacrifice to this country. It's very upsetting to hear you talk about the things they do to you. Why do you let them? I suppose you have no other choice. I have been struggling with them myself for over a year now. I had nothing to lose, so I chose this instead. I could never tolerate that much abuse. I hope you don't take any of their threats too seriously. Everything is a game to them. Realize they consider the entire human race a plaything, including you. They brag to me about what they do to you. I'm sure you already know, but he doesn't love you. Their brains don't even work that way. I don't know you personally, but they have shown me a lot about you. You're an amazing person. I hope you stop letting them humiliate you. Why be afraid to retaliate? Kennedy wasn't. It's time someone took a stand to end this nonsense. Can you think of a better legacy than that? What's worse? Having everyone know the reality of the situation, or watching some of our best and brightest become slaves. I wish you the very best with the remainder of your presidency. If you're still in there, stay strong. At the bottom of his letter to the president, he includes a link to a YouTube video. I typed in the link to YouTube, and the video is no longer available. Just an interesting side note. Martian Brain and Behavior I have observed their behavior for almost a year now. Consequently, 
I have been able to make several deductions about them. The first deduction is based on their primary characteristics, which include, number one, they are hypersexual. Number two, they are hyperaggressive. And number three, they are fearful and paranoid. In the human brain, the amygdala is responsible for all of these characteristics. Therefore, Martians must have an analogous structure and it must be greatly enlarged. The morphology of their brain is also markedly different than ours. I know this because I have seen what the amphibian humanoids look like. The males are extremely aggressive. In their society, there is only one thing, and that is power. Whoever is the smartest, biggest, and strongest wins. One time, I was talking to a young male who kept trying to intimidate slash scare me. He saw that I was still confident in myself and immediately became discouraged. He stopped what he was doing and said, You think you are better than me? Then hung his head and walked away. I told him that wasn't true, but he wouldn't listen. After this, every time I encountered one of the males in public, they would attack me mentally until they destroyed my self-esteem. They did this because they are scared to death of my intelligence. The only way they have the confidence to talk with me is if I am scared for my life or completely despondent. To the males, everything is black or white. There is no middle ground. They are power-hungry megalomaniacs obsessed with control. If they are not 100% in control of every situation, they panic. If something happens that they aren't anticipating, they get very upset. They hate surprises. I know this because I was smart enough to trick them a few times. To recap, the males are, number one, megalomaniacal, two, obsessed with sex, Three, extremely aggressive. Four, fearful and paranoid. Five, power hungry. And six, obsessed with control. Sound familiar? Who else do you know that has these characteristics? If you answered, God from the Bible, you are correct. Martians are responsible for the God myth. Martians may have created humans, as they claimed but they are certainly not gods themselves. They are just another intelligent species that evolved on a neighboring planet. There is no God. There is no heaven. There is no hell. Earth is as close to heaven as we will ever get, and we aren't letting the Martians ruin it. They are going to destroy Earth just like they destroyed Mars if we let them. Our survival rests in their hands for the time being. Kyle Odom then includes a drawing of what the Martians look like in the manifesto. This is the photo I will be using for the thumbnail of this video. These are the notes under the drawing. Huge eyes that stuck out of the sockets. Yellow slash brown iris. Projecting muzzle with 45 degree angled nostrils. Huge mouth dark green skin. The only part I really saw well was the eyes. This is what their teeth look like. Elmo rules the world. Something they kept saying to me. I assume they said this because their heads look like a Muppet. Again, they only revealed bits and pieces to me, and very briefly. Thankfully, I have a photographic memory, so I was able to remember what I saw although I only remember the general appearance, because each time I saw them, it was very brief. They would smile at me in stores and reveal their mouths, eyes, nose, all separately, never together at the same time. Noteworthy Martians. U.S. Senators. Roy Blunt. Roger Wicker. Richard Durbin. Patty Murray. Tom Carper. Ben Cardin, Mitch McConnell, Ron Wyden, 
Tim Scott, Bill Cassidy, Barbara Mikulski, Elizabeth Warren, Kelly Aote, John Barrasso, Jean Shaheen, Debbie Stabenow, U.S. House of Representatives, Dan Lipinski, Mike Quigley, Brett Guthrie, Steve Scalise, Gary Palmer, Terry Sewell, Martha McSally, David Schweikert, Ruben Gallego, Jared Huffman, Mike Thompson, Doris Matsui, Nancy Pelosi, Amy Barra, Mark DeSalnier, David Villado, Devin Nunez, Luis Caps, Steve Knight, Brad Sherman, Raul Ruiz, Scott Peter, John Larson, Rosa DeLauro, John Carney Jr., Jeff Miller, Tom Rooney, John Lewis, Hank Johnson, Austin Scott, Tom Graves, Luis Gutierrez, Luke Messer, Andre Carson, and more, and Israeli leadership, Lee Rosenberg, Afu Agabria, Hanin Zoabi, Shal Mafaz, Isawi Fredge, David Azalai, Yair Shamir, Shimon Salaman, Ilan Galan, Alazar Stern, Gilad Erdan, Donny Dunoen, Haim Katz, Moshe Faglin, Yehiel Bar, Omer Bar Lev, Michael Biren, Uri Ariel, Eli Ben Dahan, Avai Wurtzman, Eli Yeshai, Amnon Cohen, Nassim Ziev, Yuri Maklev, Yisrael Eichler, Dov Kennan, Masood Naim, Ahmad Tibi, and every single prime minister since 1948. There are many others from Israel, too many to list. This is by no means an all-inclusive list. Martians are ubiquitous. They exist at every level of society and every nation. Some have blue-collar jobs, while others occupy positions of power. They control our government, our military, and corporate America as well. They keep track of every wild human on the planet and manage us like animals in a zoo. Our quote-unquote freedom is a carefully crafted illusion. The Kyle Odom Manifesto